what is miscarriage? It seems like a simple question with a simple answer, but language is important. Language can be confusing. It can evoke emotion. And it's really important to have clear definitions, especially in medicine, because your care can be determined by the definition of where you are in pregnancy, whether it's recurrent pregnancy loss. And it's never been more important in today's world with confusion and turmoil around reproductive rights to have clear understandings of definitions. So this video is all about defining miscarriage and helping you understand the medical terms so you can advocate for your care and understand more. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families for years. And a huge part of my job is helping people through early pregnancy and caring for people with compassion through miscarriage is a huge part of what I do. And part of it is understanding what the definitions are. This is actually the first chapter of my book on mis miscarriage. I wrote a book called Not Broken, An Approachable Guide to Miscarriage and Recurrent Pregnancy Loss. It is a book to help people advocate for their care, to understand what we know and what we don't know about recurrent miscarriage and miscarriage in general. And the first chapter of the book is definitions because understanding the terms is part of being able to have the language with your physician and your medical provider about your care. And so let's get started and understand these terms. So a miscarriage in society is typically describing a early pregnancy loss that stops developing on its own sort of voluntarily. That's what we think about with miscarriage. But professional medical societies have their own very succinct and clear definitions, and they actually all differ a little bit. So let me explain. The American Society of Reproductive Medicine, which is my professional medical society, it's for reproductive endocrinologists and people who are caring for people trying to build their families, defines a miscarriage as the naturally occurring expulsion of non-viable fetus and placenta from the uterus. Now, I know that's a medical term. It doesn't really ooze compassion for the grief associated with miscarriage, but this is a medical term and they're trying to define it very clearly. Now, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists defines it slightly differently. They define miscarriage as the loss of pregnancy less than 20 weeks gestation. Now, the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology, sort of the European counterpart of ASRM, defines miscarriage as pregnancy loss before viability. So a very simple, you know, but slightly vague definition. Viability is the ability of a fetus or a baby to survive after delivery, kind of on its own. And that does change over time with technology and, and understanding. Now, the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, sort of the United Kingdom equivalent of ACOG, defines miscarriage as the spontaneous loss of pregnancy before viability, which they define as the time from conception to 24 weeks gestation. So these are all very similar, but yet slightly different medical terms for a miscarriage. And it's important to be very specific and understand. Now, that's the definition of miscarriage, but there's also nuanced definitions of miscarriage within miscarriage. There's a biochemical miscarriage and there is a clinical miscarriage. And those are defined by when it happens or how far along in gestation that it happens. A biochemical miscarriage means that you test positive for pregnancy, whether it's a urine test or a blood test for the pregnancy hormone that's being created by the pregnancy. You test positive for pregnancy and then you have a late period or you have a period before you can see anything on ultrasound or you can test anything under a microscope. And that's typically before about six weeks gestation or about five and a half weeks gestation at the very earliest. That's the earliest you could really see anything on ultrasound. A clinical miscarriage is happening after you can see something on ultrasound or if you have tissue to test, you can look at it under the microscope and see that it is pregnancy tissue. And biochemical miscarriage versus clinical miscarriage is important because that's been used in the past to help define what recurrent miscarriage is. Certainly as a person who has a miscarriage, you know, people can react differently and have assumptions based on things. Sometimes people say, oh, I had a miscarriage and 
my friend says, oh, well, how far along are you? And they say, oh, I had a positive pregnancy test. And then a period a week later, sometimes people will say something pretty insensitive, like, oh, well, were you even pregnant? Or does that even count? And yes, it does. I mean, egg and sperm found each other, fertilized, implantation happened, and the pregnancy started making this pregnancy hormone. That person was definitely pregnant. Now, the pregnancy stopped developing early, but that doesn't take away what happened to them or the grief that they have. But this definition or how far along people are in pregnancy has been used for a long time in academics and medicine and you know medical care to define who has recurrent pregnancy loss or recurrent miscarriage. And that's really important because recurrent miscarriage, you know, that definition signals, oh, we should evaluate, like we should do testing to figure out what's going on. And the sooner you find out that there's an issue with the thyroid or anatomically, then the sooner you can fix it to prevent another miscarriage. Now, most miscarriages are caused by a genetic issue within the embryo that's unique to that embryo and it doesn't mean it's going to happen again. But there are certain anatomic immune hormonal issues that can put someone at higher risk of miscarriage and it's important to figure that out. But the definition of recurrent miscarriage has changed over time. When I was in training and certainly before 2013, the definition of recurrent miscarriage was three consecutive clinical miscarriages. So that meant if somebody had a biochemical miscarriage, positive pregnancy test in the late period, that didn't count as a pregnancy towards this definition. Not necessarily sure why the three consecutive, I don't know why consecutive was so important in our textbooks for defining when somebody deserved to get testing. And, you know, the three, it's just like so hard to go through three losses before it sort of feels like anyone's going to take you seriously or help you with testing and help make sure everything's okay. So in 2013, that actually changed the American Society of Reproductive Medicine changed the definition of recurrent miscarriage. And it changed again in 2020. So let me tell you a little bit about the evolution, because it's really exciting to see that in the field, because I think it's the tides have turned towards more patient-centered care and advocacy. So in 2013, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine defined recurrent miscarriage as a disease distinct from infertility defined by two or more failed pregnancies. And they went on to say, for the purposes of evaluation and treatment for recurrent pregnancy loss, a pregnancy is defined as a clinical pregnancy documented by ultrasonography or histopathologic examination. So in 2013, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine said it doesn't have to be consecutive and it doesn't have to be three. You can do testing and evaluation after two clinical miscarriages. And so that was a revolution and a lot more people got testing and evaluation and care than before, but that left out a whole group of people that were having biochemical miscarriages. And so in 2020, ASRM redefined recurrent miscarriage and they said this, a disease distinct from infertility defined as the spontaneous loss of two or more pregnancies, period. <laughs> They left out the requirement of it being a clinical miscarriage, and it opened the door for the ability to do testing if someone's had two or more biochemical miscarriages. And that comes from evidence that people with biochemical miscarriages have just the same chance of having thyroid disease or a uterine septum or antiphospholipid syndrome as people with clinical miscarriages. And so no longer do people have to wait until they have suffered more or suffered longer in order to get the evaluation that they need. I do always tell people that the frustrating part of recurrent miscarriage is that the issue is almost never with the people that are getting pregnant. You know, it's with the embryo. It really is bad luck that that particular egg and sperm come together and the chromosomes just don't fit in it. And it doesn't mean that the next pregnancy is destined to miscarriage, but it's important to do that evaluation to not make assumptions and to make sure you're not missing anything. But this evolution of definition of miscarriage and definition of recurrent miscarriage um, has been transformative in my own career. Now, it's important to realize that there's two other types of early pregnancy loss that are not considered miscarriages. One is an ectopic pregnancy and other is a molar pregnancy. So these are both non-viable pregnancies that are usually diagnosed in the first trimester, but it's not considered a part of the definition of miscarriage. An ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy that implants outside of the uterine cavity. 
It's most often in the fallopian tube, but it can be on the ovary. It could be even in the abdominal cavity or pelvic cavity, but most often it's a embryo that implants in the fallopian tube. And that's actually an urgent situation. It's something that can lead to bleeding, uh, blood loss, and need for immediate medical attention, but that's not considered a miscarriage. Now, a molar pregnancy is a pregnancy that implants in the uterus, but from the start, it's off genetically and it is a rapidly dividing cells similar to how cancer cells develop. There's different types of molar pregnancies, but it is not a pregnancy that is destined to be a baby and it needs immediate attention and can take um, some time, uh, medical treatment to recover from and be able to, to try again. So ectopic pregnancy and molar pregnancies are early pregnancy losses, but they're not a part of miscarriage or involved in the definition of recurrent pregnancy loss. I want to clarify a medical term that is really important, abortion. Abortion is a medical term and it's used in medical charts. It's used in medical billing and patients often read their records or they get their medical bills and they'll see spontaneous abortion or threatened abortion as a diagnosis. They call us so upset. You know, why are you saying that I had an abortion? That was a highly desired pregnancy and it stopped developing on its own. It's a miscarriage. Well, abortion is a medical term that's been taken out of context in society to mean something totally different. And so when we're trying to communicate as doctors and providers, using medical terms is really important. So I want to explain to you some terms in your medical chart and exactly what they mean. So the medical term abortion just means a pregnancy that stops developing before viability. It does not say why it stops developing. So you think about it voluntarily stopping developing, you kind of think of miscarriage and then the way society is twisted words and language that abortion is an elective termination of a pregnancy that would have led to a live birth. It's actually really not true. Abortion is a medical term. It doesn't have an indication. It doesn't have an emotion. It is not telling you why. It's just telling you that the pregnancy stopped developing. There's some medical terms that we use. So threatened abortion, that is a medical term that you might find if somebody is pregnant and they're bleeding. The pregnancy could be viable. You could have a heartbeat on ultrasound. It could be everything looks great, but that person is spotting, that person is bleeding. The medical term for that, if you're billing or you're writing in the chart, is a threatened abortion. Like I know what that means because I went to medical school and I learned what these terms mean. I can read that in the emergency room and the we're you know communicating with the nurses and the, and the team. Oh, threatened abortion. Okay, great. It's not a complete abortion. It has nothing to do with terminating an elective pregnancy. It just means someone's pregnant and they're bleeding. That's it. And the term missed abortion means that someone has a pregnancy that's no longer developing. It's eight weeks along and there's no heartbeat anymore, but the pregnancy is still inside the uterus and it's called a missed abortion because the body hasn't gotten the signal yet that it's time to let go of that pregnancy. So a missed abortion means someone is still pregnant. The pregnant the pregnancy is still inside the uterus, but it's not a viable pregnancy. You could think of it as a miscarriage that hasn't passed yet, hasn't come out of the body yet. That's a missed abortion. A spontaneous abortion means that somebody lost the pregnancy, had a miscarriage without any medical intervention. So they didn't take pills to help the pregnancy come out of the body. They didn't do procedure like a DNC or a dilation and curatage. They spontaneously passed the pregnancy. That's a spontaneous abortion. Now, a complete abortion means that somebody was pregnant and they're no longer pregnant. It doesn't say why, it doesn't say how, it's just someone has completed the passage of the pregnancy. It's a complete abortion. Now these terms help medical providers talk to each other, communicate in a succinct, clear manner exactly what's going on with the patient. And that's really important in documentation and understanding. But I've had patients call us crying with their bills, you know, looking at insurance or seeing notes, you know, that say the word abortion. It's just been so twisted in society. And we'll never, you know, take that back, right? Like we're not going to re-educate the entire world about the exact medical 
use of the word abortion, but we still use it medically because it's correct, succinct. And I just really want people to understand that because it can be such an emotional you know, loss and grief and to not understand these terms and see it, it can be surprising and it can sort of add to confusion. So I just really want to help you. So there it is. That is the definition of miscarriage, which seems like should be a simple thing to define, but you can now see how it's nuanced and can be confusing and how important language is. Now, if you want to learn more about miscarriage, of course, I have videos here on YouTube. I have lots of content on Instagram, on my blog, listen to my podcast, Baby or Bust. But the most in-depth information about miscarriage and recurrent loss is you're going to find in my book, Not Broken. It's on Amazon. I'm really proud of this work. It's helped a lot of people. So if you're interested in learning how to advocate for your care, I encourage you to take a look at Not Broken, an approachable guide to miscarriage and recurrent loss. If you want to stay in touch with me on a weekly basis, subscribe to my newsletter. I'll put the link in the description. I really hope you learned something today. Like this video if you learned something. Comment with questions that you have. Subscribe to this channel so you can get my weekly videos and stick around for more learning.